talking about our English football system. I tell you now, I tell you now, a lot of people going to have a lot of views on this because at the minute it is something major and it's a big talking point and I think we can't leave it. We can't leave it. I listened to Stuart Pierce's interview yesterday um, after the game and I said to myself, you know what? He's right, he's spot on. At the end of the day, all he can do as a manager is prepare them players the best he possibly can. Give them the instructions they've got to have for the 10 days that he's with them. You know, he's with them for 10 days, he works with them, he does the best he possibly can. And that's all managers, not just Stuart Pearce, that's all managers across the board. Because there's a lot of people that don't understand what goes into managing a side, especially when it's a national side. You're given a group of players that you've got together, you've got 10 days to work with them. If they're, if they're classed as young internationals, internationals, pros or whatever, you're going to expect them to take that information on. So it's not your fault. If them players go out there, don't show the bottle, don't show the heart, um, and don't go out and follow the instructions. If they don't do them three things, what can you do? You're standing there, he said he's shouting from the sideline, speaking to them, and they're still not listening. It's not they don't respect him. Players choose to do their own thing. So at the end of the day, what happens is when they do their own thing, they get it wrong, and you see what happens. See, players don't understand. Don't do your own thing. Your manager gives you instructions, go out and do the right things. Yeah, He knows what's best. That's the reason why he's been put in charge. Listen to what he has to say. Go out, do the right things. Right, so that's that point. We need to clear that up straight away because there's a lot of people talking about, you know, Stuart Pierce has got to go get, get somebody in. Forget all that. It's going to be the next person for four years. It's going to be all right. Then all of a sudden, players are going to feel like, you know what, we want to do our own thing. No. So, let's move on. Let's talk about the Premiership for a minute now. You know, the Premiership is so commercial, that is what's killing us as a national team. Full stop. Full stop. Our top level has only foreign players in it. Everyone wants to buy a foreign player. Everyone's looking at, you know what, let me go and get X, Y and Z. He costs X, he costs Y. Let's bring them in. The fans want that. The fans, who are English fans, are moaning. And when they're moaning, they either want, and if the manager's not doing well, sack him, get rid of him, sack him, get rid of him. I've never heard one set of fans moaning to the board about giving our young, homegrown players a chance to play. You never hear that. The manager's not good enough, get rid of him, we're not competing at the top level. Arsene Wenger's always trying to groom players, not albeit homegrown players. Not all of them are homegrown players, but he's, he's trying to groom the young players. So he's trying that at Arsenal. But the team that is actually doing it in the Premiership and who was flirting with relegation this season was Villa. Paul Lennon's still in a job because their ethos was straight away, let's work with the young players, nurture the homegrown players, give them the opportunity to play and put them in a shop window. You can't beat that. More clubs need to do that in the Premiership. For us as a nation to succeed, that's what we need to have. We've now got this new under-21s league that we've got. What for? What for? Let's be honest. We won't, we're only putting it there to make it look good. But there's no real reason for having the under-21s. We're having it there because we're not really nurturing anyone. It's just another under-18, now it's under-21s. So you still got your reserves. Then the first team, you're not bridging the gap. They're saying the bridging, they're not bridging the gap. If you're bridging the gap, you would have been bringing them young players into the first team, giving them that experience that they need.